in France. And I wanted to ask you, I mean, you have a lot of articles coming out, and we all suspect that it was a false flag. Why do you think this was a false flag? I simply can't imagine that it was anything but a false flag, Dave. And at the same time, I mean, I was suspicious of 9-11 at the beginning, less suspicious then than I am now, because uh, false flags certainly weren't new back then. There have been many false flags in America, probably uh, to your your listeners, uh, the Gulf of Tonkin incident uh, back in the mid-1960s would be the most familiar. Uh, giving Lyndon Johnson carte blanche to just rip up the war in Vietnam. And uh, certainly there have been many other false flags, many of them by America. And uh, so it's, it's, it's logical to think that when something as dramatic happens as 9-11 or what happened in Paris, that there's something rotten in Denmark, as we say. Well, think about what happened in Paris. Multiple sites were attacked, I believe it was seven, by a uh, gunman dressed all in black, carrying automatic weapons, managing not to be noticed apparently until shooting started. How do they ever pull off something like this? To me, it seems obvious that this was a very carefully planned and orchestrated military operation way beyond the sophistication of garden variety terrorists. You can see terror terrorists pulling off a stunt here or there. This stuff happens all the time in various places around the world. But this was very, very carefully planned. Just like 9-11, even more so, you know, getting airplanes to, to fly into buildings and uh, hit the Pentagon, which wasn't an airplane, but a cruise missile uh, with, with, no, with no airplane parts, no engines, no fuselage, and no bodies. It obviously was a missile, not an aircraft. Uh, but but this, these things have to be very, they're very sophisticated. It takes a lot of expertise to pull them off. And that's, that's, that's what struck me so much about what happened in Paris. And think about this. How could a group of terrorists, whatever number they were, six or eight or 10, maybe a couple that haven't been arrested yet, how could they possibly, how do I want to put it? How, how could, how, yeah, simple. How could they possibly outwit French intelligence especially because the people allegedly involved in what happened were monitored by French intelligence. They were singled out as possible threats and monitored by French intelligence and yet supposedly managed to pull off st a stunt like this, multiple attacks on Friday night. Does this make sense to you? It really makes none to me. It, it makes no sense whatsoever. I mean, when you look at it, it looks like all... The other attacks that we've seen, like in Canada, Australia, uh, previous to the one that we just saw in France, uh, the Charlie Hedbo, and it, they all seem to follow the same script. I mean, we saw the um, Syrian passport, which was dropped. I mean, I don't know what terrorist runs around with passports and identification on them, and you know, while they're performing a terrorist act, it makes no sense whatsoever. But the question is, why... Do you think they needed this false flag right now? What was the purpose of it? There's always a purpose, and that's the most important thing of all. This stuff would never be carried out without a purpose in mind. We can see what happened post 9-11, Dave. All the horrors that followed, beginning with the, beginning with the, the Afghan war and the, and the USA Patriot Act, it was written well in advance of 9-11, put on the shelf and then hauled out at the appropriate time, followed by the, uh, I mean, the, the Patriot Act, of course, eviscerated a number of Bill of Rights protections. And then we had the Homeland Security Act, which I called the National Gestapo Act, and, uh, and numerous other uh, police state laws and, uh, and, uh, and uh, 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 executive orders and presidential uh, diktats and uh, various other measures that, that were put into force. And, uh, and uh, Americans were so scared, a, fe a propaganda fear campaign to get Americans so scared they were willing to put up with any inconveniences or loss of liberties to have the government protect them, having no idea that the government was the perpetrator of what happened and, and they had the various schemes in mind that they intended to pull off. And we can see what happened post 9-11. So we can only imagine what's coming post 
the Paris attacks last Friday, and we can already see that France declared war on Syria, supposedly bombing ISIS. I don't believe they're bombing ISIS at all. I think they're working with America, bombing Syrian infrastructure and government targets. And uh, and Russia now, now says that it will join forces with France. France has agreed to do this with Russia to attack ISIS in Syria. Well, my comment on that is I'll believe it when I see it because so far the only thing French warplanes have done is attack uh, Syrian uh, infrastructure and government targets. I don't think they're going to attack ISIS at all. If they do, they'll be subverting America's campaign against Syria to replace the government. And France is as adamant about replacing Assad as America is. So I simply, and Russia, of course, want, does, doesn't necessarily want Assad protected. Russia wants the Syrian people alone, exclusively, to have the right to decide who will leave them, lead them. No outside powers, contrary to what France wants, to what America wants, other European countries. So it's hard for me to imagine that France and Russia are going to form an alliance on the same page in what's going on now. But I said in an article that I've written and haven't gotten out, I'll get it out later this morning, uh, it remains to be seen what happens. You know, we should believe it only when we see it. So far, the evidence shows France is part of the problem, not the solution. And Russia alone is part of the solution with some of the other allies in, in the region. We'll see what happens, uh, but I'm very suspicious. But I suspect horrors will follow. Maybe other escalated wars, and the obvious one would be to, to generate something, an excuse, a pretext to attack Iran. That's the big one. So who who actually benefits from this, though? Is this is this to rile up the European nations to join in in the fight in Syria? I think America and Britain and Israel, and let me just divert a little bit in mentioning Israel, the reason I think Israel could be involved in this. We know Israel is waging war on Palestine now, totally out of the news because of what happened Friday in Paris. Palestinians are being killed on average two daily since the 1st of October. Over 10,000 have been injured. Around 6,500 Palestinians are suffering from toxic tear gas inhalation. None of this is being reported in the major media. It, Netanyahu wants carte blanche to continue his war on Palestine. What better way to do it than to cite the terrorist attacks in France and then making a statement, which he's done, equating the Palestinians to the terrorists who pulled off the Paris attacks. He's, in so many words, he's made that statement to get, you know, again, to give him freedom to do whatever he wants to do with Palestinians. He's already taken more actions. He's outlawed a group based on, on, on claiming it's, uh, it's inciting violence, which it is not doing at all. It's simply exercising its right of free expression, condemning Israel for the crimes it commits against Palestinians, which I do all the time. Well, maybe Netanyahu will bomb my building, claiming there's a terrorist in it, namely me. So that's why I think Israel is involved. But I think that the name of the game is to give America and France and Israel and other countries they're allied with carte blanche to do anything they want in the region, attacking any countries they wish, more than they're doing it already. Preserve ISIS, because ISIS are U.S. foot soldiers waging war where America deploys them. And the next part of the scheme I think is to get them into Iran and get them into Central Asia, which, they, which they're already in, but mainly infiltrating Russia, which is the main reason Putin got involved in this in the first place. He knows the dirty game. He wants to, he wants to fight the war against ISIS in the Middle East, not wait for them to arrive in Russia. So you, so think, you think the end game right now is to start a war with Russia and push into Russia. Absolutely. I, I think start a war with Russia using foot soldiers, start a war with China, Dave, same scheme. We can see it by the stuff going on in the region. U.S. warship invading the Chinese waters and, uh, and the Defense Secretary uh, uh, Ashton saying uh, it's the first of many uh, incursions to come.
my words, not his, but, his, but, but, but what he's basically saying. So it's Russia, China, and I have to believe Iran, because I think the nuclear agreement would just sidetrack things momentarily. Uh, Iran, America considers Iran a threat. Israel, it, it's Israel's number one regime, government, not regime, let's call it a government to eliminate, because it's Israel's number one rival. And what Israel wants, America is very willing to oblige. So I think those three countries are in, are in, are in the, the, uh, uh, the bullseye, I call it. And I think regime change is planned in all three of them. And again, America's scheme is less putting U.S. troops on the ground, but using proxy forces, namely ISIS. And so, other terrorist groups, Dave. Right. So why, I mean, we saw um, the Russian jet, uh, which crashed, and now it, it's come out that uh, Russia says, yes, it was a terrorist attack. Why do you think they waited to announce that the downing of the plane was a terrorist attack? Well, it really hasn't been that long. Uh, they wanted to confirm from the forensic evidence that there, were, there was evidence of explosives found in airplane pods. I'm not a forensic expert, Dave, so I don't know how long it takes to confirm this, but this is what they were waiting for. But very slowly before the official announcement was made, they were suggesting that it was a terrorist attack. And if that was the case, they knew it was not a surface-to-air missile because the plane was flying too high for the weapons that ISIS has to be able to strike it. The only other possibility was a bomb, and now they've officially come out and said it was a bomb. But this is not the reason that Obama uh, uh, entered the conflict in Syria uh, on, October, on September 30th. He, he did it because he is fearful that ISIS, that America will get ISIS to infiltrate Russia, and then he'll be battling them on Russian territory, which he wants to avoid. And in the last 24 hours, he announced, he, well, he, he announced, and uh, really Russia's defense secretary announced that Russia doubled its forces in Syria. Long range strategic bombers now involved flying from Russia. I checked to see how far this would be. I don't know what locations in Russia they're coming from, but from, but from, from a location like Moscow, I think it's southern Russia, which would be closer, but I think from, from Moscow, to Syria would be something like flying coast to coast in America. So let's say these bombers are flying maybe a couple of thousand miles. That's a very long way to go to deliver strikes. And I would imagine they have to be refueled in air. But, 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 but heavy Russian bombers are now involved. And what was the number? I think 37 more aircrafts, I mean, aircraft warplanes are being deployed to Syria to be involved. So Russia has doubled the force it's using in the war in Syria, attacking, I would imagine, twice as many ISIS sites, the opposite of what Russia, of what uh, America and uh, France are doing. So this is really big time stuff, Dave. So when President Obama came out and said that ISIS was contained and John Kerry came out saying that, yes, the amount of uh, land and territory they have is shrinking this is all a lie, um, but kind of not a lie because Russia has really been pushing them back and away from Damascus. They kind of liberated Aleppo, and they're continually destroying all the targets um, of the Islamic State. And right now, the United States is, you know, looking at this entire situation and trying to come up with a I guess, a new game plan of how to protect their proxy army. And oh. oh, indeed. Uh, absolutely, Dave. So it's such an important point. I, I, I think the people in Washington are, are absolutely apoplectic on what the devil can they do to counter, to counter what Russia is doing. And my own opinion is they can't do a damn thing. You know, they, 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 they immediately out of the box began waging propaganda wars with uh, Secretary of uh, Defense uh, Carter saying, uh, what Russia is doing is counterproductive. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> counterproductive to America's plans for sure. And I remember Obama making the statement, you said, that, 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 uh, that it's, it's not doing anything to deter uh, 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 ISIS and so on and so forth. I, 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 forget, I forget the date of that announcement, but I think if Obama made a statement today, you'd have to admit 
that, that the Syrian ground forces are making impressive gains against ISIS forces, and they recaptured a major a major base, uh, air base, Syrian air base that ISIS had held for about two and a half years, a very, very significant achievement. And, and, and they're liberating uh, one village after another, advancing. I mean, I mean Syrian forces uh, are on the advance and, and ISIS is on, uh, ISIS forces are on the back foot and America is on the back foot. So what, uh, what, what, what will America and, and France do now in, in the wake of this, uh, 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 the, the, the attacks in Syria? A bomb more Syrian targets? I guess they can do that, but they bombed an awful lot of them so far. America has been bombing targets in Syria for about 14 months, hitting infrastructure targets, hitting uh, government targets. They knocked out a power plant in Aleppo some weeks or a couple of months ago, knocking out power for two and a half million Syrians in the area. This is the stuff that they're doing. So what are they going to do, bomb more of these targets? It certainly won't deter what Russia is doing, Dave. So right now, um, we uh, there's an aircraft carrier, the USS uh, Harry Truman, yes. uh, coming back into the Mediterranean. We know uh, France, they deployed their uh, Charles de Gaulle, um, which is was already deployed before the Paris uh, incident uh, with the false flag event. That was already deployed. Now, they're bringing all these forces in. We understand that the U.S. has um, 50 special ops, probably a lot more in Syria. This is what they admitted to. Um, but I hear um, President Hollande asking for ground troops in Syria. Do you think they're going to bring in NATO into this fight? Oh, boy, what a question. What a question. I thought the only thing we can wait to see is whether other NATO countries who want to get involved in this. Uh, the most logical one, if it happens, along with France, if France dares to do this, the most logical one would be Britain, uh, America's uh, closest ally, despite saying France is. Britain is America's closest ally, going along with virtually anything Washington wants to do. But now France, uh, Hollande, and uh, Fr French President Hollande, and uh, Vladimir Putin spoke in the last couple of days or so, and agreed to join forces in fighting ISIS. Well, now is Hollande going to betray Putin and do the exact opposite of what he said he'll do? In, in my article, I said we'll have to wait and see exactly what he intends doing. But here, he and Putin have decided to join forces against ISIS, even though I don't believe French warplanes are going to attack ISIS. But, you know, we'll have to wait and see what happens. Will France and now ally with Washington? maybe with, with Britain, maybe with some other NATO countries and get in this fight and put ground forces into the country. I'd say it's a stretch to think that's going to happen. I, neocons in Washington, I have no doubt, would like to see this happen. Obama has been very reluctant other than, you know, covert special forces. And I think they've been there all along, Dave, not the 50 that were announced. I think covert U.S. forces and CIA elements have been in Syria all along, going back to 2011. Uh, what numbers, I have no idea. But I do know that U.S. special forces operate in roughly two-thirds of the world's countries, maybe 75 percent by now. So you know they infest Syria. And, you know, doing whatever they're doing. Uh, destructive things and working with the anti-government forces in Syria, doing that kind of stuff. But we're not talking about thousands. We could be talking about hundreds of these forces. My guess is that NATO will not get involved in this. If they do, my goodness, all bets are off. So right now, Kerry is saying that they're working with Turkey to shut down the border between Syria and Turkey. Uh, any reason why you think this is happening? I forgot to mention Turkey and whether NATO would get involved. Turkey, of course, is a NATO country, right. and I think they would love to get involved with ground forces. But but I believe that uh, that uh, Erdogan, uh, their president, their, their fraudulently reelected president, mm -hmm. I, th I think that some time ago said, he probably said this a number of times, that he would only be willing to do it if other nations join him. In other words, he alone will not put uh, Syrian ground forces into Syria, but he's very willing to do it if other NATO countries will join him in that kind of an initiative. So he very much would like to do this. I think Obama is very leery about doing it. So at this point, what is the U.S. government's plan um, in Syria? I mean, do they uh, are they just going to 
continue doing the same thing that they've been doing? Because right now, I mean, the, the Islamic, their proxy army is really being pushed out of Syria at this point. I'm watching this every single day. I'm watching events daily to see what's happening. Uh, most of all stuff has happened in Europe. And I have an article written I've yet to post on my blog. I'll do it a little bit later today. I call it War in Paris. I just brought it up on my desk site, on my desktop. And I just started off by saying the city of light went dark repressively. What France is doing is enacting police state laws more than the ones already on the books. There was a raid in a, in a suburban area, uh, Saint-Denis, uh, a northern Paris suburb. You know, you, you get the reports in the media, but you don't really know what's going on. But uh, they stormed this community pre-dawn today, uh, Dave, today. Uh, they killed either two or three people, supposedly going after terrorists, I think arrested several others. There was a report of a woman detonating a, uh, a uh, suicide belt and uh, killing yourself. You know, I don't know if this is true or not true, but you know, they'll tell us anything they want to tell us. But the point I want to make is France already has instituted much more repressive policies at home. It's declared war on Syria by revving up air attacks on the country. Uh, we see Britain threatening to enact a tougher police state laws. Uh, there are calls in Congress for tougher police state call, call laws in America and, and getting more heavily involved in, in the Syrian conflict. Again, the neocons wanting U.S. troops on the ground. Whether Obama will go along with any of this stuff, we'll have to wait and see. But we could say tough, tougher repressive laws enacted in America. I'm sure Obama will go along with that. We could see more U.S. forces on the ground, greater numbers of U.S. special forces announced, let alone the ones that are already there. So we could see more stuff initiated by America in the wake of what's going on. The, the name of the game for America and France and Britain is getting rid of Assad, putting in a, uh, a Western controlled puppet regime. That's the name of the game, Dave. And they want to do it any way possible, whether it's the war or any other means. And if they can accomplish that objectives, they'll do it anyway, short of war or by intensifying war. But that's what they want. And that's what Russia absolutely opposes. And you're, you're saying that their goal has always been the same, to remove Assad and basically put in a puppet government uh, into Syria. And John Kerry, he came out with a statement that they're getting ready for a transitional government within, you know, the next couple of months. He think, you know, I, I was reading in some of the corporate media that, yes, they're, they're getting ready for a transitional government. Um, they're hoping that Assad will now step down. I mean, what do you I mean, why is that propaganda coming out? Because we know Russia is not just going to let him step down. They're going to want the people to vote. Absolutely. Here's what I think of it. And I wrote a little bit about this. I couldn't get enough information. This comes out of, out of two meetings in Vienna with, with, with 18 nations, you know, the big ones, uh, including Saudi Arabia. Israel wasn't there. You know, Israel was, was the invisible elephant in the room, <laughs> like it is in all of these meetings. But there were two meetings in, in, uh, in Vienna, uh, one at the end of the October two day meeting. And then I think it was, I think it was a one day meeting just a couple of days ago in Vienna. And Russia, of course, very prominent at that meeting. And I think there was some sort of agreement for an 18 month time frame to, to, uh, hold new elections and constitutional reform in Syria, but Russia stating very emphatically that any anything happening in Syria, any changes will be made by Syrians alone with no outside interference. So Syrians will decide on what, if any, constitutional changes they want to make. Th there was already major constitutional changes made a couple of years ago approved by national referendum overwhelmingly by the Syrian people. Do the, do the Syrians want even more than they got? Well, Assad apparently is, Assad, Assyria was not invited to, to either of these 
these, these, these meetings, which I think was absolutely outrageous. But I think there must have been an agreement between Russia and Syria, where Russia said, we will represent your interests. And Assad knows that's exactly what the case was. But Assad, I think, would be very willing to enact further constitutional changes if the Syrian people want them and hold a, a, another uh, parliamentary and presidential elections if Syrians want it, provided, again, Syrians alone have, have the right, the sole right to decide who will lead them to elect their officials, certainly allowing Assad to run. He won in June 2014 with an 89% majority. The election was independently monitored, outside independent monitors, and they called the election open, free, and fair. And if another election was, was held today, Dave, I have no doubt that Assad would be reelected by about the same majority. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, because what we're seeing is he invited Russia in and Russia and Syria have been getting rid of the terrorists. So the people are being liberated. And why wouldn't they vote for Assad? Um, so why is the U.S. so um, positive that the people would not vote for him and there would be a transition transitional government? I, I, I think they know that if things if things are initiated the way Russia intends to have them initiated, you know, fairly letting Syrians decide. I, I think America knows that there is no way it can accomplish its objectives. So my feeling is there's going to be something happening if we can only guess what it may be. Maybe another pretext to rev stuff up violently against Syria and not let what Russia wants instituted take place. Let something be initiated to let Washington force regime change one way or another. What it may be, I have no idea. Again, I think Obama is very skittish about getting U.S. troops on the ground. So we'll have to wait and see what, what uh, may happen. I've been scratching my head on this as well, Dave. I don't know what could happen because Russia is into this campaign so forcefully. And Putin, in the last 24 hours, initially he said his campaign in Syria would go on for about three or four months. He's changed everything now. And he made a statement again in the last 24 hours saying his campaign will continue until his objective is accomplished meaning it could go on for many months or longer. He'll fight ISIS until he feels he's defeated ISIS to keep it from infiltrating into Russia. So, so Russia is absolutely committed. And I think Russia has displayed the power of his weapons and its military formidability, showing Washington, don't you dare confront with us directly or you face our formidability the same way ISIS is now. So I think the people at the Pentagon are very leery about confronting Russia head on. What will America do? Wow, that's the big question. I think they're scratching their heads, Dave, wondering what in the devil can we do to stop what Russia looks like it's, it's going to achieve unless something we do can stop them. I think absolutely they're scratching their heads. So we hear a lot of... Um governmental and agency, a lot of government agencies talking about more false flags. They're saying that um, the false flag in France was a test. Now, when you said they're going to do something else, do you think it's going to be another false flag to get everyone together to go into Syria? You think that's part of their plan? Well, the only one I can imagine they could get the public completely turned around on Obama would be another 9-11 day. I, I mean, it's very possible we could have another 9-11. I mean, if we had one, is it out of the realm of possibility we can't have another one? Not only another one, but something something maybe far worse than 9-11. Maybe multiple attacks, Washington, New York, Los Angeles, Chicago, maybe killing thousands of Americans, something really, really major, far beyond what 9-11 was. Is this out of the realm of possibility? I think it's I think it's very very conceivable. If something like that happens, uh, you can you can bet that all bets are off, and that might succeed in subverting. Right? I don't think Russia will stop what it's doing, but it certainly would give Russia pause 
on exactly what it should be doing going forward. But that would definitely turn the U.S. public around and uh, anything could happen after that. With all the horrors that happened after 9-11, we could see much worse stuff happening af after an even greater 9-11 if it happens. And it's funny that you mention this um, because if they decided to go down this route of having another false flag, and especially here in America, because right now the American people, the polls are saying, no, no ground troops. We don't want to go to war. Nobody really wants to go to war. I mean, that's not the first thing on everyone's agenda here. <laughs> but we know they use these type of events to trick the people into going into war. And if they decide to do this within you know, the next six months or so, or maybe a little bit longer, how would this affect Obama in office? Would this be such an event that he would be able to stay in office? That would really be unprecedented. Well, you know, you never can tell Roosevelt stayed in office for four terms when uh, only two were allowed. I don't think there were. I don't think there were term limits back then. But but uh, George Washington set the set set the precedent. Uh, 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 lawmakers back then wanted them wanted them coronated, and he thought that was a deplorable idea. But then they wanted to make him permanent president. He thought that was a rotten idea, and he stepped down after two terms. So that set a precedent. Uh, uh, Roosevelt stayed for four terms. A bad idea. He, he should have stepped down with somebody to take his place. It's very possible it could happen again. It, but because we, we were in World War II at the time, mm -hmm. and uh, we're, we, we're, we've yet to get into World War III. If we get into World War III, uh, it certainly is very possible Obama would stay in office. And it's very possible that before he leaves office, Dave, we could be in World War III. But I must say, if we get into World War III, which to me means war on Russia and or China, it means a nuclear war, and that means curtains for all of us. So it doesn't matter about fear mongering and the rest of it. It means we are really in deep stew, and we're, we're probably risking humanity's survival. Stephen, I really appreciate you coming on the X-22 Report Spotlight. Thank you for bringing us up to date on what has been going on out there. Thank you, Dave. I wish, I wish we had more pleasant things to talk about. Maybe one day with war on Palestine. What better way to do it than to cite the terrorist attacks in France? And then making a statement, which he's done, equating the Palestinians to the terrorists who pulled off the Paris attacks. He's, in so many words, he's made that statement to get, you know, again, to give him freedom to do whatever he wants to do with Palestinians. He's already taken more actions. He's outlawed a group based on, on, on claiming it's, uh, it's inciting violence, which it is not doing at all. It's simply exercising its right of free expression, condemning Israel for the crimes it commits against Palestinians, which I do all the time. Well, maybe Netanyahu will bomb my building, claiming there's a terrorist in it, namely me. So that's why I think Israel is involved. But I think that the name of the game is to give America and France and Israel and other countries they're allied with carte blanche to do anything they want in the region attacking any countries they wish, more than they're doing it already. Preserve ISIS, because ISIS are U.S. foot soldiers waging war where America deploys them. And the next part of the scheme, I think, is to get them into Iran and get them into Central Asia, which, they, which they're already in, but mainly infiltrating Russia, which is the main reason Putin got involved in this in the first place. He knows the dirty game. He wants to he wants to fight the war against ISIS in the Middle East, not wait for them to arrive in Russia. So you the think Ukraine. the end game right now is to start a war with Russia and push into Russia? Absolutely. I, I think start a war with Russia using foot soldiers, start a war with China, Dave, same scheme. We can see it by the stuff going on in the region. U.S. warship invading the Chinese waters, and uh, and the uh, Defense Secretary uh, uh, Ashton saying uh, it's the first of, of many uh, incursions to come. My words, not his, but, it, but 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 what he's basically saying. So it's Russia, China, and I have to believe Iran because I think the nuclear agreement would just sidetrack things momentarily. Uh, Iran, America considers Iran a threat. Israel, it, it's Israel's number one regime 
government, not regime, the call of the government to eliminate Korean infrastructure and government targets. And, uh, and Russia now, now says that it will join forces with France. France has agreed to do this with Russia to attack ISIS in Syria. Well, my comment on that is I'll believe it when I see it, because so far the only thing French warplanes have done is attack uh, Syrian uh, infrastructure and government targets. I don't think they're going to attack ISIS at all. If they do, they'll be subverting America's campaign against Syria to replace the government. And France is as adamant about replacing Assad as America is. So I simply, and Russia, of course, want, does, doesn't necessarily want Assad protected. Russia wants the Syrian people alone, exclusively, to have the right to decide who will leave them, lead them. No outside powers. Contrary to what France wants, to what America wants, other European countries. So it's hard for me to imagine that France and Russia are going to form an alliance on the same page in what's going on now. But I said in an article that I've written and haven't gotten out, I'll get it out later this morning, uh, it remains to be seen what happens. You know, we should believe it only when we see it. So far, the evidence shows France is part of the problem, not the solution, and Russia alone is part of the solution with some of the other allies in, in the region. We'll see what happens, uh, but I'm very suspicious. But I suspect horrors will follow, maybe other escalated wars. And the obvious one would be to, to generate something, an excuse, a pretext to attack Iran. That's the big one. So who who actually benefits from this, though? Is this Is this to rile up the European nations to join in in the fight in Syria? I think America and Britain and Israel, and let me just divert a little bit in mentioning Israel, the reason I think Israel could be involved in this. We know Israel is waging war on Palestine now, totally out of the news because of what happened Friday in Paris. Palestinians are being killed on average two daily since the 1st of October. Over 10,000 have been injured, around 6,500 Palestinians are suffering from toxic tear gas inhalation. None of this is being reported in the major media. It, Netanyahu wants carte blanche to continue with simple. How could they possibly outwit French intelligence, especially because the people allegedly involved in what happened were monitored by French intelligence. They were singled out as possible threats and monitored by French intelligence, and yet supposedly managed to pull off st a stunt like this, multiple attacks on Friday night. Does this make sense to you? It makes none to me. It, it makes no sense whatsoever. I mean, when you look at it, it looks like all the other attacks that we've seen, like in Canada, Australia, uh, previous to the one that we just saw in France, uh, the Charlie Hedbo, and it, they all seem to follow the same script. I mean, we saw the um, Syrian passport, which was dropped. I mean, I don't know what terrorist runs around with passports and identification on them. And, you know, while they're performing a terrorist act, it makes no sense whatsoever. But the question is, why do you think they needed this false flag right now? What was the purpose of it? There's always a purpose, and that's the most important thing of all. This stuff would never be carried out without a purpose in mind. We can see what happened post 9-11, Dave. All the horrors that followed, beginning with the, beginning with the, the Afghan war and the, and the USA Patriot Act, it was written well in advance of 9-11, put on the shelf, and then hauled out at the appropriate time, followed by the, uh, I mean, the, the Patriot Act, of course, eviscerated a number of Bill of Rights protections. And then we had the Homeland Security Act, which I called the National Gestapo Act. And, uh, and numerous other uh, police state laws and, uh, and, uh, and uh, 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 executive orders and presidential uh, diktats and uh, various other measures that they were put into force. And, uh, and uh, Americans were so scared, a, fe a propaganda fear-mongering campaign to get Americans so scared they were willing to put up with any inconveniences or loss of liberties to have the government protect them, having no idea that the government was the perpetrator of what happened and, and they had the various schemes in mind that they intended to pull off. And we can see what happened post 9-11. So we can only imagine what's coming post 
the Paris attacks last Friday, and we can already see that France declared war on Syria, supposedly bombing ISIS. I don't believe they're bombing ISIS at all. I think they're working with America bombing Syria. France. And I wanted to ask you, I mean, you have a lot of articles coming out, and we all suspect that it was a false flag. Why do you think this was a false flag? I simply can't imagine that it was anything but a false flag, Dave. And at the same time, I mean, I was suspicious of 9-11 at the beginning, less suspicious then than I am now, because uh, false flags certainly weren't new back then. There have been many false flags in America, probably uh, to your, your listeners. Uh, the Gulf of Tonkin incident uh, back in the mid-1960s would be the most familiar. Uh, giving Lyndon Johnson carte blanche to just rev up the war in Vietnam. And uh, certainly there have been many other false flags, many of them by America. And uh, so it's, it's, it's logical to think that when something as dramatic happens as 9-11 or what happened in Paris, that there's something rotten in Denmark, as we say. Well, think about what happened in Paris. Multiple sites were attacked, I believe it was seven, by a gunman dressed all in black, carrying automatic weapons, managing not to be noticed apparently until shooting started. How do they ever pull off something like this? To me, it seems obvious that this was a very carefully planned and orchestrated military operation way beyond the sophistication of garden variety terrorists. You can see terror, terrorists pulling off a stunt here or there. This stuff happens all the time in various places around the world. But this was very, very carefully planned. Just like 9-11, even more so, you know, getting airplanes to, to fly in the buildings and uh, hit the Pentagon, which wasn't an airplane, but a cruise missile. Uh, with, with no with no airplane parts, no engines, no fuselage, and no bodies. It obviously was a missile, not an aircraft. Uh, but but this, these things have to be very, they're very sophisticated. It takes a lot of expertise to pull them off. And that's, that's, that's what struck me so much about what happened in Paris. And think about this. How could a group of terrorists, whatever number they were, six or eight or ten, maybe a couple that haven't been arrested yet, how could they possibly, how do I want to put it? How, how could, how, yeah, because it's Israel's number one rival. And what Israel wants, America is very willing to oblige. So I think those three countries are in, are in, are in the, the, uh, uh, the bullseye, I call it. And I think regime change is planned in all three of them. And again, America's scheme is less putting U.S. troops on the ground, but using proxy forces, namely ISIS. And so, other terrorist groups, Dave. Right. So why – I mean we saw um, the Russian jet uh, which crashed and now it, it's come out that uh, Russia says, yes, it was a terrorist attack. Why do you think they waited to announce that the downing of the plane was a terrorist attack? Well, it really hasn't been that long. Uh, they wanted to confirm from the forensic evidence – that there, were, there was evidence of explosives found in airplane parts. I'm not a forensic expert, Dave, so I don't know how long it takes to confirm this, but this is what they were waiting for. But very slowly before the official announcement was made, they were suggesting that it was a terrorist attack. And if that was the case, they knew it was not a surface-to-air missile because the plane was flying too high for the weapons that ISIS has to be able to strike it. The only other possibility was a bomb, and now they've officially come out and said it was a bomb. But this is not the reason that Obama uh, uh, entered the conflict in Syria uh, on, October, on September 30th. He, he did it because he is fearful that ISIS, that America will get ISIS to infiltrate Russia, and then he'll be battling them on Russian territory, which he wants to avoid. And in the last 24 hours, he announced, he, well, he, he announced, and uh, really Russia's defense secretary announced that Russia doubled its forces in Syria. Long range strategic bombers now involved flying from Russia. I checked to see how far this would be. I don't know what locations in Russia they're coming from, but from, but from, from a location like Moscow, 
I think it's southern Russia, which would be closer. But I think from, from Moscow to Syria would be something like flying coast to coast in America. So let's say these bombers are flying maybe a couple of thousand miles. That's a very long way to go to deliver strikes. And I would imagine they have to be refueled in air. 